Wow. Hi. Hi. <sighs> Life is funny. Sometimes it's like, ha, 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 funny. And sometimes it's like, hmm, that's interesting, kind of funny. And it's funny how we use the word funny to describe both ends of that spectrum. Um, I've always found myself surrounded by people who are funny. Like my five-year-old, who's hilarious. She is a natural comedian. And I know most people think their kids are like super funny, but this kid makes me laugh every single day. I remember this one time, um, it was Christmas morning. She was probably three or four at this time. And um, she walked casually into our bedroom that morning, and, uh, which is funny in itself because there's nothing casual about a four-year-old on Christmas morning. But she strolled casually in and she goes, well, Santa left town, come and see. <laughs> and me and Josh, we're still in bed and we just kind of look at each other and we're like, you mean Santa came and he brought you presents? And now he's gone. She's like, yeah, he's gone now. He left. Get up. Come see. <laughs> it's so fascinating to me how kids' minds work in that way. They're just so innocent. They're still learning the world. So they're just trying to make the most sense out of whatever information that they get. And the results are always hilarious. Like just last week, um, <laughs> she started asking me for chicken handles for dinner. Do you all know what chicken handles are? It's just chicken on the bone, <laughs> like drumstick chicken. <laughs> but it's got a handle. I don't know, like, chicken handles is hilarious. I'm the kind of person, though, that thinks most things are hilarious. Um, like, I, I, I usually laugh at everybody's jokes. Um, and it's not because I'm being, like, I'm giving you a pity laugh. I can genuinely laugh at most things. I find humor in so much. Um, my, my personal joke-telling skills, however, <laughs> don't. <laughs> My personal joke telling skills, subpar. Um, I mess up punchlines a lot. I tend to ramble. I talk really fast. I have this really big problem with sequencing. So like I'll start telling a story and then I'll do like three tangents in the middle somewhere. And then by the time I get to the end, I realize I forgot like a bunch of stuff in the beginning. So now I have to like circle back and do that. Um, yeah. I'm spacing, sorry. <laughs> but, um, circle back. Yeah. Circle back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Circle back. So I went on this journey of like just understanding humor recently, like what's funny and why things are funny. And it's interesting that um, most of the things that, what is it interesting? <laughs> I went on this journey to figure out what's funny and why things are funny. And it's interesting that humor is so personal to us. Like the way that our brain breaks down a joke can sometimes make that joke even funnier. Um, like our personal journeys, our experiences, um, the way that our brain works to break down information that we get is very, very unique. And what's funny, like hmm, that's interesting kind of funny is that, um, we all laugh at the same time to a joke, even though we have these like unique processes that are going on. And it's interesting still that we put so much value on what's funny. Like when we're looking for a new friendship or a new partnership, um, we, we hope that there's somebody that can make us laugh. And then somewhere in there that, um, that love of humor, that need to have somebody who's funny turns into like, a romantic thing too, and that's what we look for in our partners. My husband, Josh, he's funny, like ha 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 funny. He's that kind of funny where he's got this like sharp wit, um, like slick comebacks, like you don't want to get into an insult war with him because his quips will, will sting you, it, it'll be bad. Um, but he's got this like goofy dad joke thing but he can also tell these like really smart jokes that make you think, but when they hit you, it's a riot. And the kicker about Josh that I really admire is that he can deliver his jokes with a straight face, <laughs> deadpan, and he's not breaking until you break. He's got that, <laughs> that seriousness. I remember this one time really early in our relationship, we were still in this like honeymoon phase 
where we're like super infatuated with each other. Uh, you can't stop staring at each other. You just think each other's so cute. Um, he was my boyfriend at the time. And uh, we wake up super early in the morning one day. And it wasn't early enough, though, because Josh was late. He's late for work. So he's up. I'm in bed. I'm watching him rush around the room. He rushes to the bathroom. He's brushing his teeth. And he rushes back to the dresser. He's getting his clothes. And he's the kind of person that, like, won't sit down. Like, he refuses to sit down while he puts on his socks. So he's just, like, <laughs> bouncing around and, like, knocking stuff over. And I just sigh. And I stare at him. And I'm like, you're so cute when you're rushing. <laughs> and he stops. Dead pan, stares me in the face, and he says, I'm American. <laughs> and he rushes out the door. <laughs> I laughed when he was like all the way downstairs. I was like, wow. Yeah, that, that I, I truly wish that I had that skill to just be dead pan when I tell my jokes. I'm definitely the kind of person that laughs through most of my jokes. <laughs> so I really, really admire that. This other time, uh, we were still pretty new in our relationship. And uh, we had just moved into a place together. And uh, it was Christmas. It was like a few days before, before Christmas time. And uh, I was sick. I had like a stomach bug or food poisoning. I'm not really sure what was going on. But I was back and forth to the bathroom multiple times for like a few days. It was awful. Um, so when episode strikes up, I got to go to the bathroom. I head to the bathroom. And Josh is in the shower. And we've got one bathroom. And I'm not pooping in front of my boyfriend. I'm not doing it. But I have to go in there. I, this, this is going to be a problem. I go into the bathroom, and he hears me come into the bathroom. Um, and he just starts yak, yak, yak. And he loves to talk in the shower while I'm like brushing my teeth and stuff. He'll just yak, yak, yak. So he's yak, yak, yakking. But I'm really appreciative of that because it's a distraction from what's going on. I don't think he knew what I was doing in there, which is fantastic. Um, but I get through the situation, I get up, I flush, I wash my hands, and I'm so excited that it went how it went, because it could have been a lot worse. And I'm standing there, and I'm like, I got to tell him. I'm like, Josh, we just hit a milestone in our relationship. <laughs> and he's in the shower, and he's like, oh, what? what is it? What? And I say, um, I just pooped in your presence. <laughs> and without skipping a beat, Josh says, my Christmas presents? <laughs> No, not your Christmas present, but I love it. <laughs> Josh says that I take a while to get jokes. So not only am I a subpar deliverer of quality jokes, I'm also a subpar receiver of quality <laughs> jokes. And I think that since I don't get the joke, that like everybody else doesn't get the joke. So then I over-explain jokes a lot, and I ruin them. But I have a lot of experience needing to over-explain jokes. I work part-time as an English teacher for Chinese students. It's like an online program. And uh, one of the lessons that I've taught multiple times to multiple students is about joke telling. Because um, it can be tricky. You have to make sure that the student understands all the English words that are, that are in that joke. Um, but you also have to make sure they understand all like the nuances, the little double entendres of words and things like that. Um, so I'm in this class. I have a student, Li Hao Chen, and I tell Li Hao Chen this joke. I say, Li Hao Chen, what do sprinters eat before a race? And he's like, what, teacher? And I say, nothing. They fast. <laughs> it's corny, but I laughed at it. I'm over here ki 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 and Li Hao Chen is looking at me like I'm nuts. Li Hao Chen, I've been teaching this student from when he was six, and he's now 11 years old hearing this joke. I know that Li Hao Chen knows all the vocabulary in this joke. Um, I've taught him from the ABCs up to pronouns and the B verb. Um, and just as a refresher, pronouns and the B verb is like I am, you are, we are, uh, she is, he is, etc. cetera. So he's looking at me like I'm nuts. You're welcome. He's looking at me like I'm nuts. And he goes, teacher, they fast? And I'm like, yeah, they fast. You know, they fast. They don't eat. They... And he's like, you mean they are fast? And I'm like, oh, yes and no, but yes. I loved explaining that joke, though. And I loved explaining all of the other jokes that came up in that lesson. Do you want to hear the, the joke that did it for Li Hao Chen, though? The one that had him on the floor laughing? I said, Li Hao Chen, <laughs> I have a dog. 
and she's a genius. I asked her what zero plus zero equals, and she said nothing. She's a genius. <laughs> On the floor laughing, this kid. That's the joke that did it for Li Hao Chen. And it's amazing to me that that's the way his brain worked, his experiences, his journey led to that is the joke. <laughs> And it's fascinating, but so why, why am I talking about this? Why am I talking about what's funny, what's not, who's funny? Like, so you can tell a joke, so what, right? Well, laughing and making other people laugh makes us feel good, right? Like there's a release of endorphins and neurotransmitters do their thing. And if you can induce feelings of pleasure in somebody else through laughter, they tend to like you more. And so naturally, I want to be that. Like, I want to um, be social with people. And uh, when you laugh with other people, you break down barriers and you build stronger relationships. And it's deeper than that. Like, if you have a good sense of humor, it's a direct reflection of how, how you can move through life, how you can find joy in the ups and downs in life and bounce back. And, um, how you can navigate the complexities of the human experience with like grace and levity, which sounds really good to me. It makes perfect sense, but it also troubled me because I was like, but I'm not good at that. I'm not good at jokes. I'm not good in social situations. In fact, I'm very nervous and uncomfortable in social situations. I'm not great at speaking to people. So what does this mean for me? And so going on this deep dive into thinking about what's funny and what's not funny, I uncovered some pretty gnarly truths about myself, like that my subpar joke telling was in direct correlation to my social anxieties, which was stirring up some, some pretty terrible fears of public speaking. Yikes. And how long has that been going on? For a long time, probably. I remember lots of presentations where I freaked out in high school, you know? But I may be a subpar joke teller, but I'm no quitter. So I started looking up ways to be funnier. I started searching. And then I made a list. I made a list. And what's funny, like, hmm, that's interesting funny, is that the list started out as a how to be funnier. But I, I realized over time that that same, that same list could be applied to helping me overcome my social anxieties and also to help me overcome my fear of public speaking. Um, so I want to share that list with you guys, if you will. One, um, don't take yourself so seriously. I try to think about that like all the time, and it's really hard to remember to do that. Um, but we don't have a lot of time here, and you might as well spend it laughing and especially at yourself. Um, two, timing is key. Um, take some breaths, but don't miss your opportunities hesitating to speak. Um, three, be a good listener. I'm not good at that. Josh will tell you. I'm not good at it. But spend time listening to the conversations and social situations that happen around you. Because um, they can be, I mean, what you hear can be very relatable and impactful. Um, I, as somebody who has social anxiety, I spend a lot of time when I'm in social situations not really hearing what people say, but thinking about what I'm going to say next. And don't do that. Just, just listen. Um, Four, know your audience, because not everything that you have to share is for everyone. <laughs> there's a time and there's a place. But number five, be confident and know that what is in your head to share is worth it. And, and when you do share it, share it with your head held high, even if your joke doesn't land. <laughs> and six. Take a storytelling class like this, because like, if you want to get jump started into talking in front of people, this will do it right into the lion's den. I'm telling you, <laughs> just do it. And the more you step out of your comfort zone, the more confident you'll become. So that's my list. And to end, I just want to try to tell a joke. I hope you guys will let me tell my own <laughs> joke. <laughs> I've messed this joke up a lot, so wish me luck. Here it goes. 
Oh, all right. There's this guy. He asks a girl out on a date to the dance. She says yes. Fantastic. First thing he has to do is go to the suit shop to get a suit. So he goes to the suit shop. As soon as he gets there, long line out the door, down the sidewalk. He can't believe it. He's like, this many people need a suit? Whatever. I need the suit. He waits in line. He waits and he waits and he waits in the suit line. He gets a suit. Great. Next thing that he needs is flowers. He's got to get that corsage deal, right? So he goes to the flower shop. As soon as he gets to the flower shop, there's a line out the door, down the sidewalk. He needs the flowers. He gets in line. He waits and he waits and he waits. In the flower line, he gets his flowers. Awesome. It's time to get his gal and go to the dance. He gets his gal. They go to the dance. When they get to the dance, long line. Out the door, down the steps, down the block. What is going on? They have to get in this dance, though. So they wait. They wait and they wait and they wait in the dance line. They get in. They're having a great time now. They're dancing together. He offers his date a drink. She's like, yeah, I'd like some punch. He goes to the drink table. When he gets to the drink table, can you believe it? There's no punch line. 